Review Lesson 4, the unit circle definitions of the trigonometric functions and solving trigonometric equations. Our objectives for today are, use the unit circle to find values of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions evaluated at various angles. Uh, solve trigonometric equations, and we just watched together uh, the l previous lessons on the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle, and the 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree special right triangle. And now we're going to use those two special right triangles, and we're going to look at objective one. The units use the unit circle to find the values of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions evaluated at various angles. So the unit circle is centered at the origin and has a radius of one unit. So here we have the unit circle, and you have these points on the unit circle that I'm marking in red. And these points have coordinates that are, of course, shown on the unit circle that I'm pointing with my arrows. And you have altogether 12 of them that I want to point out. Where do these coordinates come from? They come from the two special right triangles that we just looked at. So, for example, let's look at the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle. So this angle is 45 degrees. Now, on the unit circle, we measure angles as uh, rotations of a ray. Uh, the initial side of the angle is along the positive x-axis. And if we have a counterclockwise rotation, we will have a positive angle. If we have a clockwise rotation, we will have a negative angle. So if you start with this initial side of the angle along the positive x-axis, and you rotate it counterclockwise by 45 degrees, you get the terminal side of the angle, and the terminal side of the angle intercepts this point on the unit circle. The distance from the origin to the point on the unit circle would be one unit, because the radius of the circle is one unit. So what you have here is the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle that we just saw in our previous lesson. And we know from that lesson that the length of these two sides are square root of 2 over square root of 2. So the x-coordinate of this point on the unit circle would be the length of this side of the triangle, which would, of course, be square root of 2 over 2. And the y-coordinate of this point on the unit circle would be the length of this side of the special right triangle, which would also be square root of 2 over square root of 2. Now, when you take the same special right triangle and place it in the other three quadrants, as I'm doing right now, you are able to get coordinates of additional points that are on the unit circle. So, what is the angle of rotation that we have here? Again, you measure from the positive x-axis, and you're going to rotate a total of 135 degrees counterclockwise. What are the coordinates of this point? Well, you're using the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle, and the lengths of the two sides are square root of 2 over square root of 2. So the x coordinate will be negative because it's in quadrant 2. The y coordinate is positive because it's in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 3, you have this angle here, which measures 225 degrees when measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and I'm using the same special right triangle, but because this point is in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. And here I have an angle of rotation measuring 315 degrees. I'm using the same special right triangle, but this point on the unit circle would have a positive x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate because it is in quadrant 4. And, of course, we use the 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree special right triangle. Much like we use the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle to get coordinates of these points on the unit circle. And when you place the 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree special right triangle in a different orientation, like I'm showing you right now, and, of course, you can place it in all four quadrants. That would give you the coordinates of these four points. 
and there are four points on the unit circle with unforgettable coordinates. These are very easy to remember, right? So now we want to look at the angles. Of course, angles can be measured in degrees or radians, and you may remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So a half revolution counterclockwise is 180 degrees or pi radians, and you can have fractions of a half revolution. So you can have half of a half revolution, so that would be half of pi or pi over 2. You can have a quarter of a half revolution, that would be pi over 4. You can have three quarters of a half revolution, that would be 3 pi over 4. You can have 1 and 1 quarter or 5 pi over 4. 1 and 1 half or 3 pi over 2. 1 and 1 half of a half revolution or 7 pi over 4 and a complete revolution counterclockwise would be 2 pi radians. And of course if you rotate clockwise you will have negative angle measures. And you can do something similar where you can have one-sixth of a half revolution. A half revolution counterclockwise is pi radians, so one-sixth of that would be pi over 6. Two-sixths of that would be 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. 3 6 of that would be 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. 4 6 of that would be 4 pi over 6 or 2 pi over 3. And then you have 5 pi over 6. And then you've got 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and so on. So now we want to take a look at the unit circle definitions of the trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. So from right triangle trigonometry, if you have the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree special right triangle, from right triangle trigonometry, here's what we know. Uh, we know the length of the two legs, and we know the length of the hypotenuse. We know sine of 45 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse. We know cosine of 45 degrees would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And we know tangent of 45 degrees would be opposite over adjacent. So that's what we have. And uh, so if you place the right, right triangle here, you'll notice something. Uh, the length of this side, which would be the adjacent side from the 45 degree angle that I'm marking in red right now. So the length of the adjacent side tells you the x-coordinate of this point on the unit circle. And the length of the opposite side from the angle that I had marked earlier in red tells you the y-coordinate of the corresponding point on the unit circle. And we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you want to think in terms of x and y coordinates of points on the unit circle, then sine of 45 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse, but that would be opposite is y over the hypotenuse, which is 1, because we have the unit circle. Cosine of 45 degrees would be adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, but the adjacent side, when you think in terms of the unit circle becomes the x coordinate. So it's going to be x over the hypotenuse or x over 1. And the tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So when you think in terms of the unit circle, it would become y over x. So this is in fact how we define the three trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent using the unit circle. So when you have an angle of rotation given by theta, sine of that angle is given by the y-coordinate of the corresponding point on the unit circle. Cosine of that angle is given by the x-coordinate of the corresponding point on the unit circle. And tangent of that angle is given by the y-coordinate of that point divided by the x-coordinate of that point. So the special angles are all the angles that you see on the unit circle, and using the definitions that we just uh, came up with, we can find, for example, sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 would be simply the y-coordinate of 
that point, which would be 1 half. We can also observe that sine of 5 pi over 6 is also 1 half. Let's find cosine now. We can find cosine of maybe uh, pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 would be square root of 2 over 2. Make the observation that cosine of 7 pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2. Now we can find maybe tangent. Now you can uh, even have, for example, a negative angle measure. Like, for example, if I go clockwise, that would be a negative angle measure of negative pi over 4 radians, or if you want to use degrees, negative 45 degrees. Tangent of negative 45 degrees would be y divided by x, and when you do that, you get negative 1. All right, so now we want to go on to our second objective, which is to solve trigonometric equations, and here we have number 12. The instructions are to find all solutions of the trigonometric equation. So how do you do this? Now, if you prefer, you can uh, replace the x with theta, and it might be helpful for you to do that at first so you don't get confused. But basically, this is saying, for what angles theta will this expression be equal to 0? To answer that question, you'd like to begin by isolating the trigonometric expression. So it's like if you had the algebraic equation 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. How would you isolate x? Well, you will begin by adding 1 to both sides of the equation, so you have 2x is equal to 1, and divide both sides of the equation by 2, so you get x is equal to 1 half. So we're going to isolate sine of theta by adding 1 to both sides of the equation, and then dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So we get sine of theta is equal to 1 half. What time is it? It's time to look at the unit circle. Okay, students, so when we look at the unit circle here, we have that sine of theta is equal to y. Uh, that's the definition of the sine function. So basically, we're asking for what angles theta will sine be equal to 1 half? And because we know sine of theta is equal to y, you look for points on the unit circle where the y coordinate is 1 half. That happens at two places. It happens at angles that are coterminal to pi over 6 and at angles that are coterminal to 5 pi over 6. What does it mean, angles coterminal to pi over 6? Coterminal angles are angles that have uh, angles in standard position with the same terminal sides. So for an angle to be in standard position, you start with the initial side of the angle along the positive x-axis. And here you have an angle of rotation that's pi over 6 radians. But if you add a complete revolution counterclockwise to that, you get a coterminal angle, meaning an, another angle that has the same terminal side as pi over 6. So the sine of that angle will also be 1 half. And the same thing can be said of the angle 5 pi over 6. So here's the angle 5 pi over 6, and if you add a complete revolution counterclockwise, you will have a coterminal angle. But of course, you can keep adding complete revolutions counterclockwise to get an infinite number of coterminal angles. And you can also subtract, uh, or, or you can uh, think about revolutions clockwise, which would be the equivalent of subtracting 2 pi, and that would also give you uh, coterminal angles. So the solutions are these. So theta can be pi over 6 plus any of its coterminal angles, given by 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Theta could also be 5 pi over 6 plus any of its coterminal angles. So that's why I write the 2 pi n, where n is an integer. So that's it. We're done with this problem. These are the solutions. And that tells you all solutions of that trigonometric equation. Same instructions. Find all solutions of the trigonometric equation.
So we want to find all angles theta that would make the expression tangent of theta plus 1 equal to 0. So again, uh, that's like having x plus 1 is equal to 0. And how do you solve this equation for x? Subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. You get x is equal to negative 1. So now you're going to have tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. And what are we going to do now? We need to go to the unit circle. So we know that tangent of theta is defined as y over x. So what are the angles whose tangent is equal to negative 1? Well, that will happen when y and x have the same magnitude but opposite signs. So that happens over here, where y and x have the same magnitude, square root of 2 over 2, but opposite signs. And it also happens over here, where y and x have the same magnitude, square root of 2 over 2, but opposite signs. So tangent of theta will be negative 1 at these angles, at 3 pi over 4, and any of its coterminal angles, and also at 7 pi over 4, and any of its coterminal angles. So you can write all solutions of this equation as follows. Theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. You can also have theta is equal to 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. There is a way you can express all of these solutions in a more condensed form by making the observation that these two angles are exactly pi radians apart. So if you have 3 pi over 4 and you add pi to it, you'll get 7 pi over 4. And if you add pi to that, you'll get a coterminal angle to 3 pi over 4. And if you add pi to that, you'll get a coterminal angle to 7 pi over 4. And so on. Of course, you could also subtract pi if you're going clockwise. So an alternative way to write the solutions of this equation would be start at 3 pi over 4, but instead of adding 2 pi n, just add pi n, and that would take care of not only 3 pi over 4 and all of its coterminal angles, it would also take care of 7 pi over 4 and all of its coterminal angles. And of course you want to indicate where n is an integer. So that's basically the same thing that we have here, but just more condensed. So we want to find all possible solutions of the trigonometric equation cosecant squared theta minus 2 is equal to 0. So cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So if you have cosecant of theta, that's equal to 1 over sine of theta. So that's just something for us to remember. Uh, so you want to begin by isolating the trigonometric expression. So we will add 2 to both sides of the equation. So we have cosecant squared theta is equal to 2. Now remember, cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta. So if you have cosecant squared theta, you can write that as 1 over sine squared theta is equal to 2 over 1. So now you're going to go ahead and cross-multiply, so now you're going to have 2 times sine squared theta, and that's equal to 1. And then you're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2, and that's going to give you sine squared theta is equal to 1 half. So what do we do next? We're going to isolate sine by taking the positive and the negative square root. So we have sine of theta is equal to either the positive or the negative square root of 1 half, which of course you can write as the positive or the negative square root of 1 over the square root of 2. And in the numerator, that's just 1. So that's what we have. And you can rationalize the denominator by multiplying by a form of 1 square root of 2 over square root of 2 is 1. So you have sine of theta is equal to plus minus the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. 
So that's what we have. Now it's time to go to the unit circle. So we remember that sine of theta is y by definition. So we look for points on the unit circle with y coordinates that are either positive square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. And where do we have those points? We have them here and here. And the angles are pi over 4 and all of its coterminal angles. So you can write pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And then 3 pi over 4 plus all of its coterminal angles. So you can write theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. 5 pi over 4 plus all of its coterminal angles. So you can write 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. 7 pi over 4 plus all of its coterminal angles. So you can write 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Or you could try to condense everything because you might notice that these four angles are apart from each other by uh, pi over 2 radians. So you, you can just start with pi over 4, and if you add pi over 2 to that, you'll get 3 pi over 4. If you add pi over 2 to that, you get 5 pi over 4. If you add pi over 2 to that, you get 7 pi over 4. If you add pi over 2 to that, you're going to get 9 pi over 4, and so on, and so on, and so on and you'll get all of the four angles and all of their coterminal angles simply by writing what? Let me write it down here in red. Theta is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 2 times n, where n is an integer. So find all solutions of this trigonometric equation. Do not divide both sides of the equation by cosine x. That would possibly cause you to lose some solutions. Instead, what you want to do is you want to subtract cosine x from both sides of the equation, and then factor cosine x out from each term on the left side of the equation. and then set each of these factors equal to zero. So you have cosine of x is equal to zero, and cosine squared x minus one is equal to zero. And again, if you prefer to change the x's to thetas, you can go ahead and do that just so you don't get confused uh, when you're using the unit circle. You'll have the same solutions regardless. And of course, right now you're just going to solve each of these equations, like how you saw me solve the three prior equations that I demonstrated. So here you're going to look for angles on the unit circle for which cosine is equal to zero. And here you need to uh, isolate cosine squared theta first by adding one to both sides of the equation. And then you would take the positive and the negative square root, so you get cosine of theta is equal to either positive 1 or negative 1. And then you would have to use the unit circle to find the angles theta, for which cosine of theta would be equal to 1 or negative 1. And then, of course, uh, state what the coterminal angles are as well. So today we looked at the unit circle definition of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions evaluated at various angles, and we also looked at solving trigonometric equations, and our vocabulary included the unit circle, the standard position of an angle, special angles, and coterminal angles. We began our lesson by watching other videos for these two special right triangles.